Hello YouTube, this is Lauren Tutorials, and welcome to your 29th GIMP tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you how to use the Recompose component tool and the channel mixer in GIMP. So let's get started. First, go to Colors, Components, and in order to use Recompose, because it's grayed out right now, you're going to have to decompose an image first. I'm going to uh, decompose the layers, and then later I won't decompose the layers, just so you can see. So. Normally, if I was going to decompose and compose an image again, I would edit some stuff and blah and blah. And then I would go back to compose. And then I would compose an image based off of the changes I made to the color channels right here or right here, depending on if you decompose the layers or not. But what recompose is going to do if I click on it, is it's going to edit the original image that I decomposed it from. So if I click on recompose right here, the original image is going to be changed. So it's not going to make another one. Essentially, recompose is just a shortcut. Uh, it doesn't have a prompt, so it's super easy to use. I'm going to control Z out of that. Um, so if I decompose again, but uncheck decompose to layers. And then I uh, edit it again. And then I go back to recompose. It's going to work the exact same way. Okay, because the uh, color channels are going to be over here. And it's just going to detect that, I suppose, and just do it. So you don't actually have to decompose to layers in order for recompose to work. That's all I wanted to show you by doing two examples. So, okay, exit out of that, control Z, and then go to channel mixer, which is the next thing. Uh, one second, gotta check my timer. Ooh, 11 minutes, that's nice. I, I have 11 minutes, pretty sure everyone else has 11 minutes. Anyway, so, if I make this thing a little bigger so you can see the preview window better, there's preview window, uh, saving presets, opening presets, resetting all the settings I'm going to show you in a bit. Okay, cancel and help, the usual stuff. So let's get down to business. So what this stuff is going to do, essentially, I'm, I, I really am going to try to explain this well. Uh, if you get confused, please leave a comment because I'm going to try to explain this as well as possible. But essentially... I believe these three sliders represent the color channels themselves. Now, when you go through the output channels, which I'll tell you about in a bit, you're going to see that the whichever output channel you're on, the slider for that color channel is going to be at 100 by default. At least it should be. Um, if you click reset, everything should be like that. So anyway, um, if I... Uh, okay, so right here and right here, the R, the red values in the RGB values is zero. But over here, it's 255. So if I move this red slider, only this will be affected. Okay, only, I believe only pixels that have a red value will be affected. No matter what output channel you're on. I will get to output channels in one second. But... Uh, let me see. If I move the slider down, let's say I go to 50. The RGB value will be, I'm not sure what it was, because, let me see. It will be 127. So essentially, it will be like 50% of the maximum value. I'm going to control Z on that. But anyway. Okay, so it's going to be 50%. If I move it lower, it'll get lower. Um... If I go below, if I get like a negative value or below zero, it's just going to be black. Uh, 100, it's just going to basically just be zero anyway. If I go over 100, it will just be um, like the maximum, I suppose. So think of it as like percents, basically. I think that's exactly what it is. Um, I say um a lot. I'm going to try to stop. So anyway, if I have the output channel on green, not mess around with it, only the green will be affected. 
and by green I mean pixels with a green uh, value that is greater than zero, I believe, I'm not sure, but I'm, I'm just gonna reset that. Same with blue. So what this can do is a lot actually, this tool. So if I am on the red output channel and I edit the green value, what this should do is edit only the green because this slider just controls the green color channel um, and there are no other values over here so that's why it's not being affected but if you had green splattered over here it would affect that too um, yeah so it gets yellow because I believe red and green makes yellow I'm not sure but anyway what this means if I take the slider up and if I take the slider okay so if I take the slider down I guess I don't think anything happens if I have a negative value nothing happened okay confirmed nothing happened um, what I'm trying to say is that if you take the green up let's say to a hundred what's gonna happen is the green will get um, yellow but it's not just the green becoming yellow. The reason why this area is now yellow is because the output channel is red. Now, the output channel, when you move these sliders, it's kind of adding and subtracting the output channel from your color channels, if that makes sense. So if I have a red color channel, which is what I've been talking about for like the last five minutes probably. If you move the red slider, it's going to kind of um, take away the red from the red channel. If I do this, it's going to add the green. No, it's going to add the red to the green channel. Now, that kind of makes no sense, adding the red to the green channel. It's not doing that but I believe it's increasing the red channel or the output channel, whichever one, it could be any of these, it's going to increase that value for any pixels that are covered or that are present in uh, these color channels. So uh, it will increase the red values for any pixels that have a value greater than zero in the green color channel, essentially. Um, I, I'm like 100% sure. So that's what it does if I increase the blue. It will become like magenta, purple, pink, whatever you want to call it. So that's what happens. It's just adding more red and overlaying it on the this area. So let's say I changed to the green output channel. You can add more green which won't do anything you can take them away green have a negative value so it's just nothing or you can add more green increase the green I'm not gonna say add increase the green values for anything in the red color channel which is all over here or whoops um, do the exact same for any pixels in the blue color channel. Um, just to help you guys understand, I'm gonna repeat that boring lecture one more time. If you're on the blue output channel and you increase the red slider, what that's going to do is it's gonna take all the pixels in the red uh, color channel and it's going to increase the blue values. I uh, hope I said that right. And then if you're on if you're increasing the green slider, you're just going to add, increase the blue uh, values for all the pixels in the green uh, color channel. And boy, that was confusing. But here's the thing. Uh, there are, uh, I tried looking it up and actually I had to wrestle with it. And uh, I believe this is how it works. But a lot of people think that uh, the output channel is the one you're changing. Now, that's not true. The output channel is the channel you're, um, is not, not adding to the other channels, but 
it's the value you're increasing for the pixels in the other channels. So really, um, I've, I've actually seen like a video where somebody said that if you, um, that adding more green to um, the image in, sorry, that adding uh, a greater value to this slider in the red output channel was the exact same as doing the same thing to the blue, which obviously it's not because it's affecting two completely different parts of the image. So uh, I just want to get that clear. Um, these sliders represent the channels and the output channel uh, is the value that's being increased for pixels that are covered in uh, these channels. So there are only two other ones. Let me check my timer. Ooh. 250. I better get rolling here. Anyway, now I turned the timer off. So anyway, I have monochrome, an option here. What this is going to do is it's really just going to convert it to black and white. So, um, I guess like if you set all of them to zero, everything uh, will just be black. So, um, the red color channel can be amplified by having a greater value and deamplified by having like a lesser value but you can do the exact same things to the green which is over here and the blue which is in the middle so um i yeah that's how that works and there's another option preserve luminosity what this does is uh in photoshop actually in the same dialogue here for the channel mixer uh there's this uh, little thing that'll warn you uh, whether these values are not appropriately distributed. Now, what that means is that, um, like, it's kind of like a, a formula or like a guideline you don't have to follow. But even if you have monochrome off or on, what you're kind of supposed to do is make sure that all these values add up to 100. Uh, if you go above that, the image will get kind of bright. Um, and if you go below that, the image will get dark. So if you want to um, have the exact same brightness across the whole image, you're going to want to make sure that this is like 25, 25, and then 50. See, so it's all the, um, all the luminosity is evenly distributed across the image. Now, um, you can, uh, you don't have to do this, obviously. Uh, not even in monochrome, like, I believe that even for like, the, let's say, just pick a output channel and just mess around, even for this, uh, you're kind of, uh, it's kind of a good idea to like, uh, make sure it all adds up to 100 so that the image doesn't get too bright or too dark or too saturated with a certain color. Um, so that's how that works. Uh, but preserve luminosity, what that's going to do is it's going to, instead of you doing the math, it's actually going to do that for you. So let's say this was a normal image. Just imagine it's a normal image. I bump all these values up in monochrome way too bright. Yeah, it is way too bright. Uh, it doesn't matter what image you have. If you have values like these, it's going to be way too bright. But if you have preserve luminosity checked, what it's going to do is it's going to make sure that there is a relative ratio between these color channels, uh, but it's going to make sure that uh, the total brightness of the image does not uh, increase or decrease. So it's just going to stay the same. So the image will still look good. Like if I change one thing, if I change green, which is over here, the other two color channels actually change too, the middle and the one on the left. So that's neat, and if I don't have monochrome on, uh, let's go to the blue. Um, so with preserve luminosity off, if I add more blue to the green, so to speak, or increase the blue value for all the pixels in the green color channel, but then I click on preserve luminosity, you're going to see that the middle, the middle uh, pixels actually change too, and if I also did this and then clicked on preserve luminosity you would see that the image would not be overly saturated with one color uh, 
or at least I think that's what it does. Um, I believe that is it for this video. I really, really hope that um, I tried to explain it good enough for you guys. Uh, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. And um, I really hate the channel mixer because it was so hard to figure this stuff out. And I never want to touch it again. So, um, yeah, I'm going to try to post videos more often. I know that's the usual uh, thing I say. But actually, um, I kind of start, I kind of have to start making more videos just to finish the series already. Because if I don't, it'll never get finished. I have to meet a deadline because there's some other things I have to start doing in my life. Uh, so anyway, hope you guys have a nice day. And... Um, I think that's it. See you guys later. Bye.